It's game two of our Tuesday night high school hockey night live doubleheader as Peters Township welcomes Seneca Valley to Prince Cape Arena at South Point for a one versus three collision in the PIHL Class AAA standings. I'm Matt Geica. This is 10 Band TV. Welcome back. If you watched our opening game, which featured Cathedral Prep of Erie beating Cannon Mack 6-2 to two on this very same ice surface. The final score doesn't really tell you the whole story, as it usually doesn't. Uh, but in this case, Ken and Mack was game. They were ready to go, scoring first, and uh, ended up making it a one-goal game going into the third before Cathedral Prep pulled away with a three-goal third period. Now for our night cap, or uh, <laughs> nighter cap, <laughs> if you will, we have Seneca Valley coming in as the top team in Class AAA with a record of 10-1-1. and and uh, facing Peters Township in a rematch of one of the best games we've had on our stream this season when Seneca Valley beat Peters Township 4-3 to back in mid-October up at Barrel Ice Complex in Warrendale. Peters Township, meanwhile, like I mentioned, third place in the 11-team uh, division, but having dropped two games in a row for the first time this season. PT now 8-3, and three, so the record is still sterling, but uh, definitely headed in the wrong direction there at the end of December with a 5 nothing loss to a Catholic Central on the road. And then as you saw here on 10 Band TV before the holiday break in that uh, final week before Christmas, Peters Township lost in a, uh, well, come from a head fashion, 6-3 to three to Pine Rich, excuse me, Pine Richland here at Princecape. So uh, the Indians, after putting together an impressive stretch of games. They won seven in a row, in fact, allowing one goal in five of those seven wins. Well, in their last two games, they've now allowed 11 goals. Very unlike a Rick Tingle coach team. But there you see Peters Township warming up down to our left with their uh, home white jerseys with the red helmets and red pants, red numerals, and uh, red and black trim on those jerseys. Seneca Valley coming out in the predominantly black uniforms with the light blue trim. Uh, Seneca Valley coached by Anthony Rako. And uh, again, this is a team that is difficult to score against. They are allowing under two goals per game, 1.8 against per game to be exact. Uh, that's just par for the course. Seneca Valley, maybe the last couple of years, hasn't been quite as uh, strong in the regular season as we've seen, but um, it was the Penguins Cup final matchup last year that Peters Township ended up prevailing in uh, between these two squads. And we've seen these teams play for the Penguins Cup a couple of times in recent years, too. So no matter what, the Raiders seem to get it figured out by the end of the year. This year, they've just had it rolling from the start. And uh, just the two losses, one in regulation um, out of this early season 12-game stretch, they fell to Baldwin on opening night, October the 3rd, 5-4, to four, and since then, they've collected at least a point in their last 11 games. You look at the standings in Class AAA, and Seneca Valley has a one-point lead on North Allegheny, but North Allegheny has played two more games than Seneca Valley. So, really, it's a bigger lead than it looks. Peters Township in third with 16 points, tied with Cathedral Prep, our winners in Game 1 of tonight's doubleheader from Princecape. For Seneca Valley, it's a deep squad in terms of offense, Jackson Reed is the obvious star. He has 14 goals, the senior with 21 total points in 11 games. Also, a couple on the power play to go with a couple of power play assists. Uh, Jackson Reed's been a terror in this league for a couple of seasons, and that trend continues on. But you look down the list, Tyler Garvin has seven goals. Alex uh, Malichki, who scored a couple of times against PT way back in October, he's got five. Jacob Kamaniak has six. And Ethan Lindbergh has four. So plenty of players to worry about on the Seneca Valley side if you're trying to defend them. And uh, almost certainly we're going to see Jonathan Nichols, the junior goalie, in net. He's played all but three minutes this season for Seneca Valley, wearing number 70. He's got a 923 save percentage. And the way that Seneca Valley plays, typically, it leads to good goaltending. Not saying that these goaltenders are products of the system, but uh, for a the large portion of the past decade, we have seen save percentage numbers well over 900 for goalies who have worn the black and the blue of Seneca Valley, and uh, no different this year with Jonathan Nichols. For Peters Township, 
You look at uh, their roster. Will Tomko leads the squad with 13 goals, 22 total points. The sophomore was the top goal getter in Class AAA last year as a freshman. He's going to have a hard time catching Brayden Sprickman, who scored again for Cathedral Prep in our opener on 10 Band tonight. Tomko now eight goals behind the defenseman. Yes, defenseman for Cathedral Prep. Uh, but Tomko following up quite nicely. He's at more than a goal per game pace. He's played in only nine of Peters Township's 11 games to this point. He's got 13 goals. So uh, actually ahead of last year's goal a game pace. Ben Kovac, though, will be out for Peters Township. That one hurts. He is the uh, second leading scorer in Class AAA with 24 points, and he paces this Indian squad with 15 assists as well. Five of those on that potent power play, which is at 39% for the season. Yes, 3-9, 39%. No other team is even in the 30s. So Peters Township with a huge lead in that category, and special teams have been sterling on both sides of it, in fact. For PT, They have the best power play and they have the best penalty kill at 92%. And they have the top offense in AAA overall at uh, 4.8 goals per game. So a lot of the same underlying type of uh, success for Peters Township. They've come by a great record, honestly, but they just have to get things going again here as we turn the calendar page over to 2023. As the warm-ups have concluded here at Princescape, and we'll get to that starting goaltender in just a moment. The Indians have played three goalies in three games or more this year. The senior Nolan Hilbert, who was in goal for the uh, Penguins Cup Championship and the state championship last year, he's played the most with five games. Kyle Thomas, the junior, has three games. And Ethan Williams, the sophomore, has three games. Excuse me. As uh, we move into game number 12 for Rick Tingle and his team. As I mentioned for Seneca Valley, I'd be shocked if it's not Jonathan Nichols, but I suppose stranger things have happened. We'll just double check on that one as uh, we get close to puck drop. But it looks like for Peters Township that it's going to be Kyle Thomas, the junior, in net with an 869 save percentage and a 2.68 goals against average. Also saw a new name out there for PT, a uh, player making his Varsity debut, we also have uh, Troy Jones out due to injury. I should mention, too, Jones with five goals in eight games for Peters Township. But uh, Eli Prado, sophomore defenseman, number 27, makes his varsity debut tonight for Peters Township. And Luca Maeda, the sophomore forward, returns after missing several games due to injury. So uh, Prado, number 27, and Maeda, number 34, in the lineup for Rick Tingle. And his tribe. The Indians at 8-3. and three. Seneca Valley at 10-1-1. One, and one. There's the puck drop. And we're off and rolling in game number two of our Hockey Night Live. Doubleheader. High school hockey on 10-band TV. Fed over to the far side wall. And now cleared over to the near wing. Here's the captain of the Indians, Ryder Mertens, leaving it behind for Camden Martin. Turns to the outside on his forehand. Couldn't slip the pass through. It's picked off. By Seneca Valley, but taken right back. Strong play by Malley, who turned a shot on goal that Nichols had to be sharp to save. Just 30 seconds in. The Seneca Valley black jerseys, the bane of broadcasters throughout the PIHL. I know that much. I was hoping they wouldn't wear these, but they did. So bear with me as uh, we attempt to get the player ID on as many players as possible. There's Jackson Reed, big number 14, bumping into an Indian at center ice. I'd like to thank Peters Township for always having very legible jerseys. <laughs> it's uh, not always a given, for sure, especially in high school sports. Bounced out to center. And it'll be Richie Woods making the play. Sliding through. Tomko on the chase here. And he gets to it below the goal line. Centered one out in front looking for Alexander. But it bounced away from him. Here are the Raiders pulling up for a shot off the outside of the goal. On the opportunity for Marshall Hewitt, five goals on the season. Didn't even mention him in my opening soliloquy, but he's another guy you have to look out for. Several players with five or more for Seneca Valley, a team that has scored 4.5 goals per game. They're second best in the PIHL. Dumped back in by Peters Township, two minutes into this one. Pushed out to the point and kept there by Wesley Forrester, who's played... 10 games in his first varsity year as a senior defenseman. 
Forrester slid it back. Now he gets it back at the point. Took the bouncing shot. Blocked in front of the goal. Here come the Raiders. Hewitt. Backhand chance. Good save by Thomas. And he keeps it. Or pardon me, that is Hilbert, I should say. Hilbert in net. Nolan Hilbert makes the stop. He's got a record of 4-1 and one on the season. The senior, I mentioned last year's Penguins Cup and state champion, has an 870 save percentage and a 2.40 goals against average. So I apologize. Not Thomas, but Hilbert. Thomas hung out longer in the net there in uh, the warm-up at the end, so I figured it was going to be him. Turns out not the case. Mertens plugging away to win that faceoff. And Jeremy Poon swatted it out to center ice. Just a couple of Indians have played every game this season. Drew Alexander is one of them. Joey Wateska and Austin Malley are the other two. It's usually such a deep roster for Tingle and his, his program that they've built at Peters Township several layers deep. You very rarely see players play every game outside of the top guns. And here's Prado, Eli Prado, banking one out. Making his varsity debut tonight. Mertens deflects this one ahead. Down in deep with Malley. Mertens to Malley, slid off his stick. The Raiders take over. Long lead pass, broken up. On comes Camden Martin, the junior. Martin with nine points on the year, dropped it off. Malley with four goals. Yeah, then Martin in front. Mertens gathers it off his stick. A backhand score! A tremendous backhand dart to the shelf with 13.35 left in the first period. Peters Township has the opening goal, and it's an absolute beauty. It looked like Mertens had missed his chance when he couldn't gather it initially, but there you see on the replay, boy, did he take advantage of that follow-up. Beating Nichols, I think, between the arm and the body on second glance. Mertens is seventh of the season. From Martin and Malley with 13.35 to go in the first period. Peters Township getting on the board first. That first game between these two teams was 2-2 before Seneca Valley scored twice in the second period. To take a lead they would not relinquish on home ice. So there you go. Mertens, one of the team leaders, scores an early statement goal here. Not to overstate it, but Peters Township trying to break out of that two-game losing streak. The break was the best thing for him. Here's a shot from Tomko, gobbled up by Nichols. No further play. It almost doesn't feel like streaks carry over, but we do have to mention them. I'm talking about from the fall semester to the spring semester, if you will. Coming out of the holiday break. Back at it in the PIHL. A wrist shot by Tomko off the arm of Nichols. Peters Township definitely ready to go for this one. But here's Reed. That long reach, and he drags and shoots. Kick save by Hilbert. Out to the side wall. Flipped up in the air, looking for New Paver or perhaps Tomko. New Paver, the freshman pivot, freshman center. There's a backhand clear from Porter Erb of Peters Township. Tomko one hands it right through the crease. Gets to his own dump in, if you will. But nothing doing there. Seneca Valley on the breakout. Here's a chance that's blocked by Komaniak. Pardon, that was Ethan Lindbergh, I should say. Luca Maeda gets a touch on the puck, returning to action. He played four games earlier this season. Now he's back at it. He was a big contributor as a freshman last year. Scored some important goals. All the way back into Raiders real estate. Fed against the grain. Turned over and slapped wide of the goal. On the chance there for Charlie Caputo. Toss to this near side. Maeda battling for it. So is Bryce O'Donnell, first-year varsity man. 
Here are the Raiders turning shot. Forrester blocked that attempt. In front of the goal by Kamaniak, I believe it was. Broken up, and now Forrester lassos this puck and simply sends it down the ice wide of Nichols's goal. That's an icing call against PT. 10.59 to go in the first period. Ryder Burton's a name we've been mentioning for four years now in regards to his uh, exploits on the ice. So impressive to be a, a freshman who gets significant playing time, but Mertens did back three years ago, and he's kept it up ever since. Obviously, four-year varsity player. Martin, good speed here, driving into the attacking zone to the backhand, and he missed the goal. Taking it back here, Lindbergh. Barrels in behind the net. Lost control of the puck. Malley trying to chip it out and does. Finding Martin. PT moving the puck well in the early going. Both out of their own zone and in the attacking zone. Martin, though, couldn't get that one to the front. That's picked off by George Bailey, senior D-man. And the Raiders do manage to nub it out to center ice. Mertens dropped it back. Pass deflected. Corbel overskated. Malley laid a hit. Now it's on for the shoot-in by Prado. Comes loose on the half wall and backhanded to safety by Seneca Valley. That was Jack Smelser. I believe I called George Bailey a D-man earlier. He is a forward, pardon me. Just in a good defensive position, as he should have been there. Adam Rogalski takes a look, finds the puck, feeds it on near side. And uh, Richie Woods runs over a Raider at center ice. That might be a penalty. The whistle stopping play with 9.22 to go in the first period. Tonight's game brought to you by Steel City Spine, one of our game sponsors, regular game sponsors on the Peters Township broadcast this year. No, it's uh, offside, excuse me. Jump the gun on that one. Tyler Garvin won the faceoff, but the puck goes right over to Peters Township. Knocked the head, chance now, and Garvin won too many stick handles there as he was poke checked at the last minute. Tomko, that smooth skating, gets away from a man, puts it in the middle for Alexander, who cruises in behind the goal. Drew Alexander. Junior forward to Tomko. Now in tight quarters, the new paver couldn't turn over a shot. To the corner and Tomko again. Will Tomko scanning his options. Saucered one near side. Rich Woods is there to play it right back in deep. Tomko pulled it between his legs. Lost command. Here are the Raiders turning it over though, right to Kobe Ringwald, good to see him back out there. Missed uh, the final game before the break. Ringwald has three goals and five total points in nine games. I think he actually missed two goals, two games before the break. Doesn't have those gaudy numbers, especially on the power play this season that he had last year. I believe he was the leading assist man on the power play for Peters Township last season. Here's Reed, and he has his pocket pick from behind. That's the way to defend a man like that, is put two players on him, if you can. That was uh, Camden Martin who ripped it away from him. Come the Raiders again. Backdoor play! Oh, what a stop! By Wilbert. Or Hilbert, pardon me. Uh, by uh, uh, Komaniak, he had the chance from the slot, a great opportunity. Hilbert knocked the net off its pegs, but that was after the save. No problem there. <laughs> Wilbert, a name from uh, a ghost from Christmas past, if you will, for uh, Peters Township. There were quite a few Wilberts on the team for a while there, but Nolan Hilbert 
Hilbert is his name, with an H. Has uh, staked his claim to the crease, I think, this season. As once again, Rick Tingle goes to multiple goaltenders. Getting everyone some action, giving everyone a chance, really, to take command here. And Hilbert's lost just once in his five starts. Mertens freed up the puck. Nearly held in at the point by Alec Malichki. Now Malichki takes a slap shot that's weakened on the way and right in to Hilbert at the top of his crease. He kneels down on top of that one to get the stoppage in play with 6.59 to go in the first period. No penalties in this period. There's referee Todd Hendry working double duty tonight. Also had the first game in our doubleheader. This is Andrew Malichki taking the face off. There are two Malichkis for Seneca Valley, as you might have guessed there. Andrew Malichki, the sophomore, and uh, Alec Malichki, the senior. Alec, the senior, has five goals and 12 total points. Andrew has two goals on the season, accounting for both of his points. Toward the front, deflected, didn't get through, and poked away from Malichki, and on comes Tomko. Trying to beat his man to the outside, couldn't do it. Solid defending by Tyler Maxwell, a freshman defenseman. It's not an easy man to get stick on puck against, but Maxwell did it, hung with Tomko well. You got to skate in today's game if you want to hang in there, even at the high school level. Tomko looking for the late man. That was Alexander, but deflected away from him. Tomko's on it again. Has a look, finds his man. That's Prado with a soft wrister that's handled and held by Nichols. Jonathan Nichols making the save and adjusting his left leg pad after the stoppage. Seneca Valley always a tough nut to crack, at least since Anthony Rako took over the coaching. The PT is getting some opportunities here, using their speed well. Prado shot it toward the front. Poon trying to hunt it down now over on the half boards. Poked away and taken into the attacking zone and flipped in on Nolan Hilbert. Poon couldn't catch up to this play at the near side as it's banged around by Stephen Longwell. Prado got a stick in there to tap it on to Caputo. He connects to Poon, bouncing play in on goal. Saw one of those go in in the first game. Actually, it was a center ice shoot in that went in the goal, a knuckling puck. That one didn't hit the ice, this one did. It's usually a nightmare scenario when the puck bounces. <laughs> Goaltenders are uh, not happy to see that. Here's a shot from the point that's gobbled up again by Nichols. This time off the stick of Caven Fisher. Line change for both sides with 5-12 left in the first. My name is Matt Geico on the play-by-play. -play. It's my eighth year calling Peters Township games. I believe it's my sixth year or maybe fifth year calling PIHL games overall. Rather Pittsburgh Hockey Digest or 10-band TV. As always, my pleasure to be here with you. It's a great time and uh, it's been fun to get to know the PIHL community over the years. Martin with a steal at center ice. Mertens now. Has a look. Finds Malley. Tapped off his stick. Now Mertens parading in. Ryder Mertens looking for his second goal of the period. And he shot that off the arm of Nichols, maybe the shoulder, and it's deflected away. Martin to the outside. Very elusive, Camden Martin. But this time he's stripped. And it's cleared for an icing against Seneca Valley. We're at Princescape Arena, former home of uh, Penguins training camp and also Penguins practice when they weren't down at uh, then Mellon Arena. And then it became Consol Energy Center. But now that they have their palace up in Cranberry, 
This is uh, predominantly a high school hockey venue and a busy one. Also youth hockey, of course. All the way down the line. South Point Rink Rats. Phillips, cross ring, big slap shot coming, and it's deflected away and uh, off the goaltender on the end board, Karam. That was weird. On the drive from Forrester. Tomko absorbs the pressure. Now centers one on the turning pass. Forrester steps up. Tosses it into the corner for New Paver. Under four to go in the first period. New Paver and Malley working hard to pull that one loose. Tomko stretched out but couldn't get it, but then he knocked the stick out of the hands of a Raider. That really disrupted the rush, honestly. It made it just a one-man effort. And Peters Township defends it well. Tomko on the carry. Ends up behind the goal. Turns and spins a pass, but that's off a leg. Forrester again hammers it in deep off the kick plate. Tomko tried to one-touch it to the front, but he fanned. New Paver's got Alexander going to the front, but he elects to pass out to the point, and it was a bouncing saucer pass that leapt over the blade of Forrester. He's back on the take. Forrester pulled it away from a forward checker. It's in the skates of Marshall Hewitt, I believe. Reed, good play to himself. Reed shot, save Hilbert. Reed goes to the goal. Malichki digging in to try to free that puck up. He does, but right to an Indian, and it rolls right down in the area of Nichols' crease. He swats it away. Good lead pass. Snapshot, save made by Hilbert. Rebound was available at his feet for a moment. Clear to the line, but no further. Reed behind the goal. Longwell doubling back. Malichki chasing this one. Right back to Luca Maeda of Peters Township. Look out, a little dangerous pass there, picked off. Honestly, could have been a lot worse. This is ice by Peters Township with just under two minutes left in the first period. It was one of those so-called hospital passes, or it could have been one if the Seneca Valley player was looking for a hit as opposed to just the puck. There you see the folks dining at Bubba's Burgers across the way behind the glass partition. A place to watch a game, I know that much. It is an awesome angle from over there. Probably even better than the bleachers in front of us. Mertens, drop pass, Martin, closing. Strip to the puck, turning chance for Malley. That was blocked, but it comes right to Martin, who pivots and passes into the front of the net area, and it's deflected away. Backhand pass looking for Mertens, but that one is intercepted and sent right back out to Wateska. Joey Wateska crossed rink, dumped off a leg. No icing here against PT. And right back over to Schlieper, who shoots ahead. Wateska trying to clear. And Peters Township will escape the zone with under a minute to go in the first period. This is icing against Seneca Valley, giving PT a chance to set up in the attacking zone. Jacob Schlieper making his second appearance on defense, number 57 for Peters Township. So we are seeing the depth of this program. Come to the forefront in the first game of the new year. Happy New Year. And a belated Merry Christmas if you celebrate. Tomko put that one off the bar on the cut-in move, and it deflects high into the screen over the net. Well, Tomko inches from goal number 14 on the year. Alexander with new paver and Tomko right now. Alexander against Jacob Kamaniak. Kamaniak won the faceoff for Seneca Valley, and the Raiders clear. 
Malichki chasing after this one. He's got Jackson Reed behind him in the corner. Tomko tries to settle things down. This pass, though, behind its intended receiver. Alec Malichki had his pocket picked at center. Down to 20 seconds to go. New paver to the open man. Good lead pass on to Tomko. One last chance before the buzzer. Tomko cruises in, and I think he was poke-checked there by Nichols at the last moment. Then Nichols made a save on Tomko's desperation shot from the boards, and that's it for period number one. Ryder Merton scores off an assist from Camden Martin and uh, Austin Malley with 13.35 to go in that first period. That's the only goal. That's the only uh, inscription on the score sheet. No penalties in that first period as well. Back after this short break for period number two on 10 Band TV. Second period action imminent from Prince Scape Arena. I'm Matt Geica. This is High School Hockey Night Live on 10 Band TV. Peters Township with a 1 0 lead over Seneca Valley as the uh, tops in the division. Raiders pay a visit to Peters Township, the second and final meeting of the regular season between these two teams. The shots on goal in the first period 11 for Peters Township and 7 for Seneca Valley. Hilbert and Nichols, the goaltending uh, battle tonight. At least to start. Hilbert made seven saves in the first. Nichols made ten, but did allow the goal from Ryder Mertens to get behind him. A firm little backhand. About halfway up the net. From the inner edge of the right circle. Peters Township now attacking the goal down to our left, and it's Mertens cruising in, and he pulled it to his backhand, but it drifted away from him. That puck was rolling. Tough to control in that situation. Doesn't behave like it does when it's lying flat. Malley on a collision back there. Mertens muscling a man off the puck, but gave it away in front. Longwell now tapped it along. And up ahead comes Lindbergh. Couldn't get by to the outside. Andrew Malichke leaning in. It's a delayed offside against Seneca Valley. They tagged up, though. Now Reed pressuring. Kobe Ringwald behind the net. Ringwald, the senior D-man. Ringwald is a name we've been calling a lot with regards to PT over the years, too, and not just Kobe. Malley stops neatly in the corner, but coughed it up. Up to center, and what's this stoppage for? Might have a penalty on the way. Our first of the night. And it's against Malley, 98, says referee Todd Hendry for cross-checking. 15, 47 to go. In the first period, or second period, first penalty of the game, though, first power play of the game. The Peters Township penalty kill, number one in Class AAA, 92%, although they've scored no shorthanded goals. Seneca Valley's power play, seventh out of 11 teams at 15%. Top goal getters on the power play, Jackson Reed and Tyler Garvin with two apiece. And there is Reed nudging it behind the net, and now he'll take it on the tee up. Bank at the center and picked off by Forrester, who stepped up. Not only has Peters Township not scored a shorthanded goal, they have not allowed a shorthanded goal. No shorthanded goals in their first 11 games of the year. That's a weird one. 
In behind the goal and emerging out the near side. The play out to the point and Hunter Mark. And a snapshot and a glove save by Hilbert, the right-handed catching goaltender. <laughs> and Alec Malichke jokes around with him saying, hey, you didn't have to windmill that one for us. But <laughs> Hilbert felt like he did. So many times in high school hockey of players on opposite sides who played together in various youth programs throughout the region. And by the way, I called them the Rink Rats. They're no longer the Rink Rats, the program here. It's the Rebellion. My mistake won't happen again. In front of the goal and nearly the first shorthanded goal of the season on the pass from Mertens. Try to connect on to Tomko. Tomko had a couple of shorties last year, if memory serves. And here he is again between the circles. Blocker save and a strong one by Nichols, who simply stood up and calmly punched that one away to the sidewall. Tomko on it again, though. PT spending a lot of time in the attacking zone. Short a man now. Lindbergh, fan on that pass. He's still in trouble. Gave it away. Mertens to Tomko. Stopped. Rebound off the outside of the net, maybe off the glove of Nichols, but a penalty. Tomko drew it. It's a hook. That'll end the power play prematurely. It's that Lindbergh misplay that led to the mess for Seneca Valley. And Mertens, look at that little slip pass. Lindbergh hooking Tomko from behind because he felt like he had to. One of the easier calls to make. Definitely denied a clear scoring chance. Name of that hockey program is the South Pittsburgh Rebellion. No longer the South Point. Anything. Just so you know, four on four play for the next several seconds. Garvin dealt it back to the line. Tyler Garvin got it back. Looking for Reed on the backside. Lurking. Not to be. A shot from distance by Stephen Longwell is blockered away by Hilbert. 13.53 to go in the second period. Just a few seconds, Peters Township will go to the power play. It'll be an abbreviated one for them, but they're happy to have it. They're first of the night. Martin bumped off the puck as he tried to slither through. Hilbert left it behind the goal to Hudson Phillips, first-year defenseman, junior. Lead pass from New Paver looking for Malley. Couldn't handle it, could Malley. Under a minute to go on this power play for Peters Township. 39% on the year is the conversion rate. Almost laughable at this point. Ringwald on the flip in. PT scored on two of four against Pine Richland in that loss, in which they led three to two uh, before the holiday break. Malley, open man, Tomko, one timer. And how about that? Nichols came over. On his feet, basically, and snapped it up. Jonathan Nichols, sharp as you like on that save. That was a really good scoring chance for Will Tomko and the Indians. Tomko got a lot on it. Maybe not as much as he would like. More of a snapshot than a slap shot on the one-timer. The way sticks are made these days doesn't really matter that much. You don't have to take that big of a wind-up, if any. Mertens on the one-timer in tight. He was denied by Nichols. Tomko, good puck movement. Ringwald shot. That was blocked. Ringwald got it back. Power play running out. And it's over for Peters Township. Both teams 0 for 1 on the evening. Tomko picks it off at center, and he rambles in, but offside. Just couldn't hold up long enough. 12.20 left before the ice cut at the second intermission. Thank you again to Todd Kazarowski and crew for putting on the show from Princescape. They're the real MVPs. Maeta. Being back into action here. Tonight as he pins the puck to the end wall. Caputo, Maeta swirled in front by a Raider almost right into the danger zone. 
but they escape any damage. Raiders down on the road here. They haven't lost a regulation game since the opener in the first week of October. AKA three months ago. The puck's pinned to the wall. Alexander trying to kick it along. Caputo joins the party, but fed away from him. And the Raiders come in, four man strong. Rogalski, Alan, Adam Rogalski took the long range shot on that rush and it was sticked out of play by Hilbert. Ryder Merton so far has scored the only goal of this game. At even strength, just three and a half minutes into the first period. Pass goes behind Garvin, but a shot from the point by Reed that was stopped by Hilbert. Reed again loads up the gun and misfires on that one. Hilbert so far so good. It's the strong Raiders attack. Longwell, well wide with that shot. Eli Prado trying to pin that puck for a bit, wait for reinforcements. Here's Corbel over to handle, or try to, for Peters Township. Now Prado, again in his first varsity game, lost control. One timer by Reed, blocked out high. And Corbel slips it through to the safety of center for Peters Township. Under 11 to play in the period. Prado back forward again. Seneca Valley trying to slow down the pace of this game, I think doing it successfully. Because PT's been the better team off the rush so far. Lindbergh, number 91 for Seneca Valley in those black and blue jerseys. Peters Township trying to leave the Raiders feeling bruised at the end of the night. Flip in by Tomko. He was knocked down by Smelser and Jack Smelser, guilty of interference. Second penalty of the period against Seneca Valley. There you saw Nolan Hilbert. He was trying to get to the bench for the extra attacker. Couldn't pull it off, but a good effort. Second power play for Peters Township, but really their first that will have a decent length to it, assuming no further penalties. The first one was just over a minute long. I suppose that depends on what you call decent length, right? What, what, uh, what's a real opportunity? I think a minute is functions pretty well. Slapped around and out by Tyler Maxwell of Seneca Valley to start the penalty kill. Penalty kill for the Raiders, 84% on the year. Six out of 11 teams. They've scored two shorthanded goals. Alec Malichke has scored one, as has Marshall Hewitt. And there is that man. Oh, there's Andrew Malichke, pardon me. Andrew, a cut and move and a glove save by Hilbert. Give him credit. Made Hilbert come up with the save. Backdoor play from Malley, seeking out Mertens, but it was away from his reach. Ringwald to Mertens, pivoting, turning, knocked down. Play continues on. Ringwald slugs it off a Raider. On to Mertens, back below the goal line to Martin. Cradling on his backhand, fed out to the point in a ring wall. Resets, finds Tomko, closes, feeds to Mertens. In front, Martin bounced one just wide, maybe off a of body. Retrieved, though, behind the net by Mertens. Slid past him. Martin, good play to create some separation. PT looking confident on this power play. Down to 40 seconds to go on it. Tomko, centering pass broken up and taken away. Tomko harassing Malichki from behind, but Andrew Malichki... Slugs it down the surface. Just a half minute to go on this second power play of the game for Peters Township. Leading at one nothing, but certainly not uh, comfortable to just sit on this lead at this point against the top team in Class AAA through the opening three months of the season. Malley gave it around. Martin dummied the play. Tomko takes this pass on his back end. Good feet to the middle, but New Paver couldn't handle. Went right under his stick. Did that pass. Out to center ice, and now a chance on a partial break. Hilbert makes the save on Marshall Hewitt, who broke in suddenly, right at the end of that power play. Wouldn't have been shorthanded, I don't believe. 
Tomko, long shift for him, but still has some gumption left. Centered it for New Paver, who hacked it over the crossbar. That would have been some goal. Cole New Paver with five already in his first nine varsity games. Forrester bouncing a pass onto Caputo. He wanted to go back door for Maeda. Weird carom off the end glass. Now more than halfway through this second period. We're back to five on five as Alexander confronts a trio of Raiders at the half wall. And flipped over everybody. Out to center, Forrester inside the red line. So no icing on that dump in. To the near wing. Intercepted by Forrester. Bounce one toward the front. That was partially blocked. Forrester again kicked it away. After the soccer move, he heads into the corner. Backhanded by Kamaniak. And the Raiders can escape. Maybe three on two if they push the pace. Looking to the middle. Open man there and put over the crossbar by Hunter Mark. Hunter Mark gets it again. And he's harassed and felled from behind. I don't believe a penalty is coming up. Braden Hunter Mark with two. Classy chances there, coming down the slot, right down the funnel. 6.40 left in the second period. You're watching the first Tuesday of High School Hockey Night Live of the new year. Lindbergh picks it off inside the line. Open man on the near side was Garvin, but uh, Reed elected to take the shot while Garvin was uncovered at the right post. You probably saw him on your device screen. Now six and a quarter minutes to play in the second period. The pass eludes Ryder Mertens, and it slides all the way over to the far wing. Maxwell turned to his left, now turned to his right. Made a good play up the far side. Garvin centering. Reed shot it maybe off the body of Hilbert. I think he got a piece of that. A great chance for the top gun for Seneca Valley. Back comes Peters Township. Malley off the body of Nichols with that shot. That's been a great game despite just the one goal on the board. Plenty of flow, plenty of offensive chances. Remember, Peters Township is missing its top assist man, top point getter in Ben Kovac. Also, Troy Jones out tonight. It's not a full strength Peters Township team, but playing well so far. Martin gloves down this deflected pass. Camden Martin behind the net. Out to the line. Corbel returns it to Martin. Malley's got Mertens making a move to the front. He got it there. Mertens couldn't get the shot off. It was deflected. Mertens pivots to the outside. He took the rip. It's off the corner glass as it was deflected. Martin bumped down a Raider. Good work from this line. Creates some havoc. But the Raiders are going to be able to get it out. And it's Reed. Can't mistake that towering frame, but his Deke. Ends up in the corner. Reed pulls it loose to the man on the near side for a shot. Carter Hone, the freshman, he's stopped by Hilbert. 4.44 remaining in the second. That was a heck of a stretch of hockey right there. Up and down the rink we went after the power play expired. And if you're unfamiliar with PIHL rules, after the second period, we'll take a full intermission. Malichki against Tomko, 28 against 28 at the faceoff dot. Adam Rogalski bunted it down the wall, picked up by Korbel. Couldn't clear. From the corner, Malichki. That's Andrew Malichki. He has a look. Out to the point. Rogalski shot it and missed. Coming down the wall here is number 24, Tyler Maxwell. Turn it over behind the Peters Township net. The Indians hand it right back to the Raiders. Long distance shot. Save made. Rebound on the big rebound. But that was blocked on the chance for Rogalski pinching in. Adam Rogalski. Back out to the far side. Slugged on goal by Smelser off the outside of the net. And Peters Township pushes it out to center ice. And into the attacking zone goes Caputo on the forward check. Caputo with Tomko as the Indians are halfway through a line change. Bounded out to Watteska. Or pardon, that's Corbel actually. I don't think Joey Watteska is dressed tonight. In fact, haven't seen him as the Indians have the back pedal here. Woods wipes out the man who shot that puck. 
Andrew Malichki, I believe it was. Poon colliding here with Bailey. Wrench the puck loose. Tomko set sail. Well, Tomko decides to pull up. Look for the late man. It was behind Poon on that pass. And some ice opens up now for Seneca Valley. But Woods nearly ran his man into the ditch there. Blind play for the Raiders. Picked off by Newpaver, who shoots in with three to go in the second. Oh, Poon got a stick on that clearance by Nichols. But no harm, no foul for Seneca Valley. Ringwald, calm play on to O'Donnell. Couldn't connect, though, with Nathan D'Amico. Here's D'Amico, lifting it, couldn't clear, tries again, does get it out. O'Donnell overskated. This flipped over the head of Schlieper, but right into the clutches of Kobe Ringwald. Wearing the A on his jersey, Ringwald up ahead for D'Amico's wrist in. D'Amico ran over his man. O'Donnell tried to backhand pass to D'Amico in front. Didn't get through. Ringwald shooting. That missed. In behind the goal now, getting close to two minutes left before the break. O'Donnell. Peters Township with the only goal in this game, just three and a half minutes in from Ryder Mertens, the senior captain. This puck goes out of play. And the faceoff coming up at center ice. 156 left in the second. There's a good look at Nathan Domenko, senior, first year varsity forward. Still in search of his first point as an Indian at this level. As is often the case with Peters Township, seniors making their debut as varsity players. The JV, the freshman teams are so deep, it goes all the way down to middle school. Sometimes your last year is your first chance and your only chance. But guys have made the most of it over the years. Burns' pass clicks off the stick of Malley. Martin's on it there. Malley looking to center it, it bounces around and in! It went off the stick of a Raider and into the goal! How about that? Austin Malley gets the friendly deflection for his fifth goal of the year. He was trying to find Mertens, and the best intentions sometimes work out, even though the way they work out might not have been how we planned. Martin tapped it to him, and look at that. It caromed in off... I think that's Jacob Gilbert, the defenseman. Might have been Andrew Malichki, actually. Either 28 or 38. 133 left in the period. That's a significant goal for Peters Township. They worked hard for it. Martin has two assists on the night. And Malley has gotten to the 10-point mark on the season. Five goals, five assists. Turned over. Shot from the right wing boards. Patted out of there by Hilbert. Alexander pulling it away from Alec Malichki. Here's Maeta following on. Alexander, Maeta trying to team up to get it out with one minute to go in the period. Here you hear the announcement over the PA. Bodies bang behind the net. Again, it's Rich Woods involved. Who else? <laughs> when he's out there, someone's going to get hit. It's usually a member of the opposition. Alexander swats it through. Here's an opportunity. Tomko off the body of Nichols and wide. Malichki stretches out with 35 to go in the period. But he was dispossessed. Following on is Andrew Malichki. He was stripped. Down the ice it goes. And icing, unfortunately. No race to the puck at this level. Kendall Martin upset about that because he would have beat it out if it was. Uh... Hybrid icing instead of the no-touch variety. Malichki, Hone, and Reed is your line for Seneca Valley. Andrew Malichki, that is. Peters Township wins the faceoff, though. That was Mertens taking care of business. 30 seconds to go in the period. Reed's open, and he scores! What a big goal for Seneca Valley. The turnover. 
the centering pass. And Jackson Reed gets number 15 on the year to make it 2-1 to one with just 14 seconds left before intermission. There you see Ringwald flinging it around. I think that was Hone who got it loose and gave it to Reed and he doesn't often miss from there. I'll wait for the official announcement, but I think it was Hone who made that pass. Down to five seconds to go in the period. So that erases the goal for Mally essentially and we'll go into the third in a 2-1 game, tight as we expected, a great game as we expected. Highly competitive, chances at both ends, good goaltending, some good last-ditch defending. And uh, Mally sharing a laugh with Jonathan Nichols as the two teams will adjourn to their respective dressing rooms for the only real intermission of the game. Mertens and Mally for Peters Township. Reed, his 15th of the season for Seneca Valley. And here we are. The game's still up for grabs as we go to the third period. Tonight's game brought to you by Steel City Spine. Peters Township up by one on 10-band TV. Keep it right here for more.
jumbo ice caramel drizzle peppermint mochaccino. Extra caramel. That's us. I'd love to join you guys at the beach house for a few days, but between my job and the kids, it's just not that easy. Not to mention, how am I squeezing into a bikini after this winter? Keeping off extra pounds while balancing a family and a career can be tough. And 500 calorie coffees won't get you there either. Weight Loss Direct provides a 24 7 support and one on one coaching to keep you on track and guarantee you success and health. Start your journey at weightlossdirect.com. Ah, uh, look at him, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, climbing his way through the corporate rat race. We've all been there, focused on that next raise, promotion, chocolate bar. Keeping an eye on your health can be exhausting. Weight Loss Direct is a personalized wellness and weight loss program. We utilize an AI algorithm to determine your specific foods and match you with a real-life coach and an easy-to-follow meal plan so you could stay on track to success and health. Check out weightlossdirect.com to learn more.
Ah, uh, look at him, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, climbing his way through the corporate rat race. We've all been there, focused on that next raise, promotion, chocolate bar. Keeping an eye on your health can be exhausting. Weight Loss Direct is a personalized wellness and weight loss program. We utilize an AI algorithm to determine your specific foods and match you with a real life coach and an easy to follow meal plan so you could stay on track to success and health. Check out weightlossdirect.com to learn more. Third period set to begin from Prince Scape Arena. Tonight's game brought to you by Steel City Spine. Peters Township 2, Seneca Valley 1. Heading into the third, and this is Matt Geica on 10 Band TV. Todd Kazarowski and crew are live on site. It's been a wonderful hockey game so far. Peters Township scored the only goal of the first period. Ryder Mertens from uh, Austin Maui and Camden Martin. And then it was Martin uh, setting up Maui. Late in the second period with 1.33 to go before the break, making it uh, apparently a two-goal Peters Township lead going into the break, but not so fast. Jackson Reed scored with just 14 seconds left before the intermission off an assist from Carter Hone, the freshman, his line mate, and Reed's 15th of the season uh, among the league leaders in goals. His... Uh, 15th connection has made this as tight as you can be without it being tied. I feel like I'm repeating myself. That was the same case in our first game tonight uh, in which Erie Cathedral Prep came down to Princecape and uh, took a 6-2 win against Ken and Mack with three goals in the third period. Uh, we'll see what's on tap here. I'm not sure we'll see quite that spread in the final score. I suppose a lot could happen yet, but I expect these two teams to battle down to the final buzzer, and I expect these two teams to be going at it for the top spot in the uh, in the class all the way down to the end of the season. Both teams are right there in the top three. In fact, if Peters Township wins, they'll be within three points of number one Seneca Valley at the top of the standings. Here's Reed pressuring and Reed getting a turnover, but it's snapped around the boards by Peters Township. They're attacking the goal down to our right. Malley got in the way of that attempted pass from Smelser. Jack Smelser of Seneca Valley. We play 17-minute periods in the PIHL. If we're tied after three, we'll go to a three-on-three -three overtime. Snapped up the near side. Picked off by George Bailey. To the far side. There's Reed in pursuit, but it's tossed over his head and out. Smelser calling for the puck. On the near wing, he gets it. Connects under Reed's stick. Swatted ahead off the body of Kobe Ringwald and flipped high in the air all the way down behind the Peters Township net in the corner. Taking it off the wall. Nifty play. There is Tomko. It's a two-on-one for Peters Township. Tomko backdoor shot. Score! Austin Malley puts it in. His second goal of the game. His third point. Tomko dragged it through the neutral zone around a Raider. And those two were home free. And an excellent pass right on the money. Here you see Tomko escaping the zone. I think he got by Smelser on that side, and then he drifted toward the middle and passed it right under the stick 
of the freshman defenseman Tyler Maxwell to Maui for his second goal of the game, sixth of the season, to make it 3-1. Outstanding play in Peters Township now. They're within striking distance of that ninth win of the season. Get them within one of Seneca Valley for the most wins in the division, tying them with North Allegheny. But N.A. has played 14 games. They played 14 before the break. So did Pine Richland, for that matter. Peters Township played 11, and Seneca Valley played 12. Now the two teams back at it here on the first week of January. And uh, a crucial goal for Maui as he shoveled that one behind Nichols, who didn't have a prayer after that pass got through. He just had to hope that Malley hit him with a shot or missed it. Turned over. Clicked away to the far side boards. Held in. Bouncing off of a Raider. New paver reaching back. This is Matt Geitka on the play-by-play. -play. Todd Kazarowski and his video crew are live on site producing this one and providing the pictures and the sounds. I love those natural rink sounds as well. It's all part of the sport. The sights, the sounds, and heck yeah, even the smells too. We can't do that yet. We don't have the technology <laughs> to bring you the distinctive uh, scent of, well, Zamboni fuel and Lord knows what else. It's uh, living on the equipment <laughs> when it comes down to it. Held in at the point by Andrew Malichke, pulling it back, feeding it out for a shot by Longwell that missed. Nearly three minutes into this third period. Malley has scored early in this period for Peters Township to make it a 3-1 lead. Push back to the line. Gilbert shooting off the stick of Hilbert. So Gilbert wide of Hilbert. Scooped up by Phillips. Couldn't clear. Right out in front it drifts. Alexander chasing for Peters Township. Trying to flick it by his man at the wall. Marshall Hewitt. Penalty on the way. Against Peters Township. This will aid the Raiders' cause. Obviously. Lead pass. It's an extra attacker situation right now. And a missed shot down the right wing. Triggers the whistle for a hold. 13-34 to go. In the third. Second penalty of the game against Peters Township. And it goes against senior defenseman Wesley Forrester. Second power play for Seneca Valley as well. The Raiders are 0 for 1. Hewitt leans in against Malley. And, or, uh, yeah, Malley wins the draw and down it goes. Sorry, I didn't expect to see him taking the face off. Figured it'd be Mertens, but from that circle. Malley now picks it up, got it on back. The Indians killing some time here. Peters Township realistically trying to keep hopes alive for a regular season championship. Reed's drag move was stymied at the point of attack and cleared. You see the uh, banners for Peters Township at the attacking blue line behind the, the boards, behind the glass on the far side of the ring from our angle. If PT wants to win the division in the regular season, they're probably going to have to win this game and not have it go to overtime as well. So get them within three, like I mentioned, of Seneca Valley. With still eight games to go, but you can't expect the Raiders to fall off that much. Looking for Tomko of Peters Township and Mertens. And PT also looking for its first shorthanded goal of the year. They've been hunting it. They've been sniffing around the net on the two penalties against them. And again, they keep the puck in the attacking zone. Seneca Valley can't even get it set up right now. 34 seconds left on the penalty. New paver on the puck pressure. Cross ring pass. Ringwald got a stick in the way. Kobe Ringwald rips it out to center ice. Held there. Backhand play to this near side by Bailey. Dropped back for a chance on the shot from Ian Urim, and that's deflected over the glass off the screen. Out of play. Just 12 seconds left on the quickly evaporating second power play of the night for Seneca Valley. 
Peters Township came into this game, losers of two in a row. Their first losing streak. I put streak in quotes. I don't really call it two games a streak, but I suppose technically it is. Meanwhile, Seneca Valley has gained at least a point in 11 straight games. 10-0-1 since an opening loss to Baldwin. Power play's over, and Peters Township just drew a penalty themselves. Camden Martin gets the job done. So PT is going to go to the advantage with 11.29 left in the third. It's got to be interference, and it is. Against Alex Alec Malichki. Third power play of the night for Peters Township. Rare 0 for tonight so far, 0 for 2 for the top-ranked unit in the league. Tomko distributes. The man who just won the draw. Now to this near side, Mertens. The puck's in his skates and got it out to center by Seneca Valley. Back forward goes Ringwald. Carter Hones at the tip of the spear. Four checking here, forcing the... Indians to the far side, but Mertens navigates the picket fence. Slips it in behind the net. Around it goes past Martin, who dummied the play. On to Ringwald. Now Tomko, near side Mertens, who scored from nearly that spot in the first period. Ringwald wanted to load up a shot, but he lost control of the puck. Andrew Malichki got the clear with his brother Alec in the box. Now Tomko to the slot and took the shot that bounced wide, maybe off a stick. Will Tomko just set up that 3-1 goal by Austin Malley. Now he makes a great pass over to Mertens. Controls in front. Oh, Malley thought it went in. I thought it did too. What did that hit? I have no idea. <laughs> that close to a hat trick for Malley. Ringwald to Tomko. I guess we'll never know unless we take a look at a replay there. Out to center on the errant pass. 40 seconds left on the power play. Down to 10 minutes to go in regulation time. First on it for Seneca Valley was Longwell. Couldn't get it out. Tomko to the middle. Got it back to Tomko. Shot one, and it missed. Maybe getting a piece was Nichols. Hewitt down the boards with this clear. He chases into the far corner. Martin played it right past him dangerously. But a tap pass from Ringwall right back to Martin. However, the power play is going to run out. PT is going to be 0 for 3. Tonight's game brought to you by Steel City Spine on 10-band TV. Tomko was tripped coming out of his own end. Another penalty coming up against Seneca Valley. Malley just simply hands it off just inside the blue line. So right back to the power play goes Peters Township. Just 13 seconds after their third power play ended. Adam Rogolski has a seat. The shots on goal right now 21-18 in favor of Peters Township. It was 19-18 through two periods. I thought I heard one of the referees say, do you want a timeout? I don't know if Anthony Rako is looking for one or Rick Tingle is behind the Peters Township bench. A reset here, a drop of the puck. Malley pushed it forward, new paver. Couldn't get to it, but Malley recovers to Ringwald and now Forrester. Or a pardon, that's Mertens, rather. Ryder Mertens. Ducking and diving and feeding into the corner for new paver. So we see Malley and Merton stay out there. Far side, I'm guessing, is Will Tomko. There it is. Tomko, one-touch play to the front. That's off a stick. Cleared past Tomko, and out it goes. One on three. Chance here for Jackson Reed. Rako, the coach for Seneca Valley, getting him out there, even though he might not be a penalty killer typically. Of course, I don't watch a ton of Seneca Valley games, so I don't know. But on back-to-back -back penalties, you want to get your best players out there. This is offside against Peters Township. Malley can't believe it. He thought he held up. 121 left on the fourth power play of the night for PT. Well, 
Austin Malley, your star of the game so far. Two goals and an assist. That was Tomko's output against Seneca Valley the first time. Malley also scored against Seneca Valley up at Barrel in October in a 4-3 loss to the Raiders. This one looks to be tilting the other way, but not over yet. Still a power play for Peters Township. Martin right to the front. Sop, rebound, score. Camden Martin does it all himself. Coming out of the corner and scoring on the power play as he buries his own rebound. For those about to rock, we salute you. Martin goes down the handshake line with his fourth goal of the year and his first on the power play. And there you see it. One chance, second chance, high into the twine. Peters Township with a three-goal lead with 8.14 left in regulation. And they're one for four on the power play. Of course, when you're converting nearly 40%, one for four is actually going to drop your conversion rate. I highly doubt they're concerned about that right now. PT on the verge of what could be their signature win of the season as Mayetta shoots between the legs of the defender, Jacob Gilbert, got it on goal. Nichols stopped that. Nichols has been good in this game. It was the uh, victim of a bad bounce late in the second period. And the two goals in this period, he could do nothing about. Lead pass, maybe a chance for Malichki breaking in and Hilbert shuts it down. Nolan Hilbert keeps it 4-1 as Malichki had the opportunity for Seneca Valley. 7.35 left. And we'll see where Rick Tingle goes as far as player deployment with a three goal lead. You don't have to be quite as stingy as far as uh, the go-to guys getting most of the action. But you're not out of the woods yet either. It's not three minutes left. It's still seven minutes left. Peter Township up next. They'll be at North Allegheny next Monday at the Barrel Ice Complex before they return home to play Upper St. Clair in a couple of weeks. Still worried about this one, though. Garvin couldn't pull the trigger on the shot as he was stick-checked. Caputo gets the clearance. Jackson Reed has the only Seneca Valley goal tonight. Chop shot by Reed, absorbed by Hilbert. Just the one goal on the board for the Raiders. Looking back on the Season to date, their lowest output actually came in a win. They won 2-1 to one against Upper St. Clair. That's when you know you're doing pretty well. <laughs> when your worst offensive night of the year was still a victory. That was their first win of the year at Upper St. Clair. Got them going on the season. Then they reeled off four in a row after that. And they won five in a row coming into this game. They've outscored their opponents 28 to four over this five game win streak that closed calendar year 2022. Smelser muscled off the puck. Malichki lets it go to Hone, back to the line. Big slap shot coming, deflected in. The Raiders aren't dead yet. Maxwell shot it, it was tipped in front of the net. And with 5.56 left in the third period, the Raiders have a lifeline, 4-2. And we'll see on that replay if we have an idea of who got that tip in front. Like I said, Maxwell pumped it on goal. Was it Smelser in front of the net? The defenseman going to the high traffic area to cut the lead back to two. So now PT with a 2-1 advantage here in the third. PT scored the first two goals of this game. Seneca Valley got one. PT scored the next two. Seneca Valley then gets one. The pattern continues. That'll be just fine for the home team tonight. They got to work for it. Malley, escape pass is a beauty onto the tape of Camden Martin. 
He's defended well, but Mertens follows on. Drop pass, looking for Malley, who's on hat trick watch. Malley leans in, and killing time is just fine too, especially 200 feet from your goal. PT couldn't quite pull it off there though. Down the wall comes Lindbergh on the charge. Woods bumped into him. So did Martin, now Merton slides to the puck with five minutes left exactly. Malley clears. Just past 10.30 on a Tuesday night, first Tuesday of 2023. This is icing against Seneca Valley. Next up for Seneca Valley is a home game against Pine Richland, 9 o'clock next Thursday, January the 12th. And I say home game, but it's really a home game for both teams when you play Pine Richland or North Allegheny. Barrel, the only complex in a Class AAA that houses three teams out of the 11. Chance there for Alexander. And Tomko nearly banked that in off Nichols, who was a little out of position, couldn't quite get back to the post. Alexander pins a Raider to the wall. Tomko guides it out toward the point. Look at that sliding play. Good job from Phillips, who made the commitment to go. Now it's a three-man rush down the right side for Seneca Valley. Forrester overskated. Reed couldn't get to that puck. It's cleared out to the point and hundred mark. To the outside comes Hone, who has an assist in this game. Up the far wing. Malley and Tomko, they overskate it. Shot, gloved, and held easily by Hilbert. Just under four left. Peters Township looking to split the season series. Sounds about right with these two programs. Two of the real powers in AAA year after year. Seneca Valley right back to its usual routine of defending well. Woods blocked that shot. They've given up four here tonight. And they gave up three to the Indians in the first meeting too. Seven in a season series against Seneca Valley is pretty good. Smelzer goes back door. Oh, he had his man Andrew Malichki, but it would have been a tough angle for him to shoot that. Regardless, a good looking pass that's just skipped over a stick. Three and a half left in the third. The most recent goal in this game scored by Seneca Valley. I think it was Jack Smelser on the tip in front. It was his, it's the second goal of the year for him. Ringwald rims it around. No one there for Peters Township. They're changing behind the play, or ahead of the play as it were. And Hilbert decides he wants to hold it again exactly one minute after he did it the first time. 2.59 left now. And if you're Seneca Valley, you're thinking about getting the goaltender off for an extra attacker. Or you're thinking about a timeout, which they'll take right now. Each team gets one. You might as well use it. Remaining schedule for Peters Township. At North Allegheny next week, that'll be a, an important one. Another team that Peters Township is battling with for uh, the top of the division. Peters Township coming into tonight in third place, now tied with Cathedral Prep. With a win, PT gets to 18 points, which will be two behind North Allegheny, three behind Seneca Valley. And PT has games in hand on both of those teams. You see Anthony Rako and his staff talking things over with the Raiders dressed in black tonight on the road. Up next for Peters Township after North Allegheny, they'll host Upper St. Clair. Then they'll be at Bethel Park and host Baldwin on the 31st to close out the month. So five games in January, four in February. But as far as games, they're directly competing uh, against teams near them in the standings. North Allegheny next week is the one to circle. For Seneca Valley, they have Cathedral Prep come into barrel on the 23rd of this month. And then North Allegheny, a big showdown. Might be for the uh, 
regular season championship on February the 13th. Those are important games coming up. This one's been an important one. And the Raiders are in desperate straits right now. Jacob Kamaniak to take the face off, the six goal man, with Hewitt and Reed on his flanks. Lost the face off though. Peters Township controls. Empty net down to our right. Tomko takes a look and he scores. Just like that, Will Tomko puts the game away with an even strength empty netter. Just getting in over the blue line, electing to take it himself and score his 14th of the season. Peters Township's going to win this one. They're up by three with under three to play. Well, he took a look. He had Caputo on the far wing, but never really thought about it seriously. So there you go. Somewhat anticlimactic when the empty netter scored that early in the sequence. But no one's complaining who's dressed in red and black and white tonight. I would say the most impressive performance of the season for Peters Township. I haven't seen them all in person or broadcasted them all. But this one's got to be right up there with anything they've done this year. And they come roaring out of the holiday break with it. Phillips slap shot deflected off the post from Luca Maeda. He was uncovered in front. The 4-1 win against North Allegheny also a solid effort. You had that here on 10 Band TV. Hone shooting off of the leg of Forrester with two minutes left in the game. Out comes Tomko. He's got Maeda making a beeline for the front of the net, but the pass slipped by him. Drop pass, wrist shot off the arm of Hilbert. Reed tried to get to the rebound, could not. Tomko takes it, skies it out. Here's a chance on a breakaway perhaps for D'Amico. Ran right through the goaltender, Nichols, who came way out. Lost his stick, appears everyone's okay. Alexander. Nathan D'Amico, I told you, he's looking for his first varsity point. He was that close. All he had to do was somehow find a way to poke that through the charging goalie. Or maybe find an assist here. Down to 113 left. Alexander looking to guide it out to the point. That's intercepted by Lindbergh. Giving right back. New paver. That one's off iron. Two posts in the final three minutes for Peters Township on top of the five goals they've already put in. Turned over. Opportunity at the front. Shovel try by D'Amico. And he's stopped. Malichke gloves it to his stick. And Alec Malichke sends his man away. Hilbert. Comes out of his net, not as far as Nichols did a moment ago, but out nonetheless. D'Amico staying out there. Offside, Peters Township. Three goals in this third for PT. They've put the win on ice. Just got to get through the next half minute. And they're home free. They'll be just two points shy of North Allegheny for second place with two games in hand on the Tigers. Two competitive games tonight, but we'll end up not looking so much in the final accounting. That's why you got to watch the games. Smelser, far side Hewitt, chipped in deep. Schlieper couldn't get it out. Malichke holds, hooks it back against the grain. In the middle, Hone tried to make a pass to the back door. Nothing doing. Reverse flow and off a stick out the center. Final 10 seconds. We'll count it down to five. Smelser confronted by Martin, who had a big offensive day with three points himself. There's the buzzer. Indians win. Indians win. 5-2, the win of the year for Peters Township to date. They move to 9-3 on the season. They say goodbye to that two-game losing slump prior to the break, and they snap Seneca Valley's five-game win streak to climb within three points of the Raiders in the top spot in the PIHL Class AAA standings. Quality, quality performance for Peters Township. Seneca Valley made it interesting. Uh, made it more than interesting, in fact, but three goals in the third cap it off 
for the Indians, who will now move on to next week's matchup against North Allegheny at Barrel Ice Complex. Looking forward to that one. Thank you so much for watching on 10 Band TV. This is Matt Geica or Todd Kazarowski and crew saying good night from Prince Cape Arena at South Point. Talk to you next time.